ready to rock and roll. We the people, of the people, by the people, for the people. And in this day, your will again has made a difference. Hey, this is your grassroots tip of the week from the only Christian in the Texas house. You can go to backmike.com, that's B-A-C-K-M-I-C.com, and get involved in the No Obamacare uh, HJR 51 and make some comments on there of how much you're for it. If you're against it, just don't even tune in. Remember, backmike.com and vote HJR 51. Comment a little bit and tell them how you're for uh, Christian's uh, No Obamacare bill. Glad to have you today at this part. We, we're honored to have the chairman of our Republican caucus. And by the way, Larry, it's a record Republican caucus, the largest in the history of the state of Texas. Absolutely. You know, what happened to make us so big from last time? Well, we had an incredible turnout of voters, obviously yeah. with the uh, the shock wave re rebounding against Obama wave. Yeah. And uh, we had more than anyone expected. I mean, we were all working on those yeah, campaigns, sure. as you know, and for us to get to 99 and then have a couple of switches at the end to end up with a caucus of 101 members out of 150 I think is pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. It really is. And, and of course the, the citizens I think are the one to thank for that. I mean they're oh, the ones in a tsunami wave came out and uh, they expressed their opinion and they're getting to where they express it pretty openly and I think that's great for us. Oh, and, and a very strong opinion, you know, less government, no new taxes. Right. Uh, and, and so now we're getting in the heart of the session and like the budget that was laid out mm -hmm. today we're going to have to face those very tough decisions, and those very same people who asked us to do those things need to be prepared to That's stand right. up beside us and defend us as we're doing these things. And, and I'm glad to hear to you do. say that you expect them to stand up and defend us yeah. because uh, what has happened so many times in the past is we've had some issue, people get in and get involved and perhaps get the victory like an election, but then go home and leave it to we politicians. Yeah. And I think you join me, I know your heart is, we need people involved. Absolutely. Let's cover one thing real quickly. We had a heated speaker's election at the beginning of the session. A lot of people won, a lot of people lost. Absolutely. And there were some hurt feelings, some words. Why don't you give us an opinion of what you feel happened and what your heart is regarding that one vote and, and what we need to do from this time forward? Well, as conservatives, we're known for independent thought. Right. So we have a lot of different opinions among our group, and we, and we expect that. But we have overall philosophies that we all agree to. In this particular case, when the speaker race, there were differences of opinions among conservatives as to who was going to be the best to lead. Uh, obviously, incumbency was a was a big part of that that race. But that very contentious as it was, now it's time to get to work. We have to come back together as conservatives to get our agenda done. And at the bottom line, that's what we're about. The only reason I got involved in politics, and I'm sure it's the same for you, was it about position? Mm -hmm. Was it about who got to do what? It was about policy. And if we're going to move the state forward. Uh, along the conservative philosophies that we know works. I mean, it's been proven time and time again. So now, after that contentious battle, yeah. we have to be able to join ranks, go arm in arm, and let's march to get our agenda done for the people of Texas. And they'll appreciate, at the end of the day, these people who are as fired up on the speaker race, they're going to be as fired up about what we get done for Texas. But they've got to be willing to stand up and fight alongside us, because we're going to take a lot of hits in the media. And the press is not going to like anything we do. They never do, as you remember. Yeah. We don't face a favorable media, so we need the folks back home who have been fighting to get us elected to continue to fight. That you know what's amazing, Larry, is last session, of course, wasn't as conservative as many of us wanted. Oh, not even close. Okay. And what I want you to kind of share with us, why last session, why now New Day this session, I think it's very obvious. Yeah. But I think it needs to come from you as our Republican leader in the Texas legislature. And I was caucus chair last time, as you know, and I took on that role because I knew the election coming up, the one we just had was going to be a very important election for Republicans. We were down to a 76-74 majority, very thin. And as you know, we had a couple of members of that Republican majority that weren't like you right. and I. And let me, let me make people understand quickly. A lot of the times people say, well, you Republicans had the majority. We did Why not. didn't you get the work done? And, we didn't and, and of course, the budget doesn't take a 51%, even though we didn't have that, I think you'll agree. Yeah. But it takes a two-thirds vote. And for sure, with half Democrat, half Republican, we didn't have that vote. We did not have that, and we failed on issue after issue after issue, not because of lack of effort, but we didn't have the votes. Now, with this new election, with 101 members, 
I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to take care of the, the agenda that you and I want to move forward and get things done and hope we put things in place this session that will last beyond your, yours and our tenure here. In, in and, and let me assure people, of course, I've bragged about the Texas Conservative Coalition because we, we're the we are the ones that push it as far to the right as possible. And, and I want people to be aware that our Republican caucus chairman here, Larry Taylor, is a member of the board of directors. Yeah. And, and I think our roles are, are same direction a little bit different. The caucus, by our own bylaws, and takes two thirds of the vote mm -hmm. to take any official position. So it tends to be more towards the center. The conservative coalition comes on our right flank and helps push our agenda forward from the right side. So it's important that we work together, that we are on the same team. Things that the caucus can't do, in my role as caucus chair, I can't do, that we can hand over the TCC and say, hey, we need you to help us on this issue to move this forward. Yeah. Voter ID was not finished last time, like we were talking right. about earlier with the, with the vote breakdown the way it was. I'm afraid we had been able to pass one at all. It had yeah. been such a watered down bill. Our folks have been very disappointed. We're going to have a strong voter ID, which I, which I include other election reforms as well. We know they're not just stealing elections on voter ID. They're stealing through mail-in ballots. And those kinds. So we need to put some additional penalties and some more measures in place to take care of that. Um, you know, we have, we have a pro-life bill having to do with sonograms for, for folks that want to get an abortion that have the opportunity to see a sonogram first which certainly can change a lot of people. The thing is just a, a mass of right. tissue to see that sonogram and see a real baby with a beating heart uh, can help change some of those people's minds and save some of those babies. So I think we'll be able to take care of that. And uh, we're talking a little bit today about the uh, problems we have on uh, the budget. And we as the Texas Conservative Coalition, where I serve, uh, we have a card that the governor has signed, comptroller has signed, and you and many members have signed. It basically says, balance the budget without raising taxes. Is that possible? Is that a goal that we're really going to seek as a Republican caucus? I, I think it's more than possible. I think it's required. Uh, but there's going to be some significant cuts we're going to do, but it's also a healthy thing. Whenever you have a time like this, you know, nobody asks for an economic shortfall or a downturn in the economy. But when you're dealing with government, to have these cycles is actually a healthy thing because they have to look inwardly and say, do we really need to keep doing this thing that we've been doing? Or can we do it more efficiently, get the same product at the end of the day, but for less money? And, and of course, the rainy day fund is something that was tried to be dipped into the past session. Are we going to try to be protective of that? And, and secondly, mention a little bit what this means for businesses in the future to try to balance the budget without increasing these fees and taxes and hitting the rainy day fund. Well, you and I were here in 2003. We faced a similar situation. It was a national economic slowdown. A lot of states went the other route to meet their shortfall. They increased taxes. Guess what? Two years later, they were still trying to figure out how to meet their shortfall. We did the other route. We did like responsible Texas families do. We cut our spending to match how much money we had coming. We didn't increase taxes. Two years later, we came and we had a surplus. And guess what? We've added more jobs. Since that time, since we've kept our tax uh, low, people are moving here by the droves. They're voting with their feet. And so you know, the, the e economic situation we find ourselves in today doesn't have to last forever. Only under Obama's plans does it have to land for, <laughs> last forever. This session's a little bit different. The voters have sent us the largest Republican freshman class I believe I've ever experienced or in history. And uh, this gives us a super majority for the first time. But what about these new members? What do you, you've talked with them now that you've met them, they're now part of the caucus. What do you think they're gonna bring to the table? It kind of reminds me of the class I came in. If you remember when we first took over the majority for the first time in right. the Texas House, in over 140 years, we had, I believe, 26 uh, Republicans in that class. And it really helped change the mindset because people, members who had been here for a while as Republicans, you know, we'd get there on a big big issue. They, well, we got to do this to get the Democrats. We'd go, hey, time out. We actually had the vote, too. We don't have to get the Democrats <laughs> right. to buy in on anything. And, and I think you find with this new blood coming in, they bring in these fresh ideas. They're energetic about it. They're fresh off the campaign trail. And they're ready to get these things done. They want to follow through on their campaign promises. So you may have a lot of the older members go, well, you know, I don't know, last time we did that, we got right. these guys would be gung-ho and ready to go. And so I, I'm, I'm excited about the group. And the other thing it brings to the table, and this is kind of a tacky way to put it, but I'm good at doing that, is the last time we, we had a challenge in redistricting and budgeting, anything else, you remember the Democrats loaded up and headed to Ardmore, Oklahoma to listen to Willie Nelson play guitars. Yeah. And this is tacky, okay, now the chairman didn't say this idea, <laughs> but they can leave town and go listen to Willie all they want to. This time we now can keep the business going. We actually state, have right? a quorum all by ourselves. That's right. That's a new day in the Which state of Texas. It's pretty exciting. And it's a big responsibility. It is. And in fact, I was just talking to a reporter on my way over here. Uh, you know, the Democrats, they obviously didn't want to lose that badly, right. but they're in 
they're loving this. They just get to sit here and watch us. There's really not a whole lot they could do other than try to obstruct and slow things down. Do you think they're going to point out anything that goes wrong in this session? How about everything? <laughs> and, and if they don't find something, they'll make something up. That's right. And the media will report it gladly like sure. that's honest to God truth. Well, that's why we're talking to you today, and you can get the straight talk here anytime at our program. Thanks for coming, Larry. Well, thanks, Wayne. Appreciate it. You bet. All right.